ingredient number one, a very warm, very wonderful story about a boy, a girl, and a very special kind of problem. Did you hear what I said, Miss Kublik? I absolutely adore you. Shut up and deal. Ingredient number two, a brilliant cast, Jack Lemon in a delightful role which gives full reign to Jack's amazing versatility. Shirley MacLaine, whose glowing warmth lights up the screen like a Christmas tree. Fred McMurray, this is a Fred McMurray you've never seen before. You know, you see a girl a couple of times a week just for laughs, and right away they think you're going to divorce your wife. <laughs> I ask you, is that, is that fair? No, sir, it's very unfair, especially to your wife. Yeah. Ingredient number three, Billy Wilder. There's nothing quite like that Billy Wilder, some like it hot kind of laughter. Are we dressing for dinner? You know, just come as you are. So you're pretty good with that racket. You should see my back end. Where'd you see me serve the meatballs? <laughs> Mildred, he's at it again. A United Airlines jet lands in Los Angeles, launching the biggest entertainment airlift in motion picture history. The world's press, some 300 newsmen from four continents, arrive for the Hollywood premiere of Stanley Kramer's... It's a man, it's a man, man. There was a certain amount of money buried down in this park. Now, I suggest that we quietly get into our cars, and then when we get down there, we dig up the money, providing that there is some money there. There's only one way to figure it, and that is every man for himself. And so begins the maddest, wildest, zaniest chase ever filmed as our merrymakers race across country by land, by sea, by air. For somewhere, there's a fortune in buried treasure. Which one of our Mad World comedy stars will be the first to reach it? Now, where have I always told you that the smiler hid the dough? Where? Uh, right there. The world's critics go stark raving mad, mad, mad. The wildest chase comedy on record, rave the New York Journal American. Nobody's going to get me up in the air. A smash. Has more laughs than any other comedy in the history of the screen, rave the Los Angeles Herald Examiner. Why can't you have a little confidence in me? It's a man, and man, man, man. Yeah, it's so <laughs> Ah, yeah. You can't afford to miss this. Wildest comedy ever filmed, added the Boston Record American. Help! Help! Betsy, say something! Everything you've heard is true. It's the biggest entertainment that ever hit the screen with laughter. Left runner, no! No, no, no! Wild and hilarious all the way. It's a mad, 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 mad world is everything its extravagant title suggests, says the New York Times. A wham-doodle, humdinger, stemwinder, said the New York World Telegram and Sun. Great Britain's Manchester Guardian applauded with exuberant, exhilarating, triumphant. Marvelous, wild, prodigious lapstick, exclaimed the New York Post. Everyone who's ever been funny is in it. Our traffic is so congested. Mass confusion on wheels. But Detroit is a trite. What they'll do in Detroit is make bigger automobiles. So be a happy fellow. Be a clown boy. Punch and mellow. Get off the shelf and enjoy yourself. It's a man. It's a man.
you blab about the beginning of this picture, nor do we care if you give away the ending, but we do care if you reveal the middle. In fact, Jerry Lewis urges you to see this picture from the beginning on penalty of losing your popcorn privileges. One thing we will tell you is that Jerry plays the part of an eccentric chemistry professor who invents the greatest new drink since Dracula discovered the Bloody Mary. One sip and he turns into, ah, that would be telling. And even those who know aren't telling. <laughs> Professor? Professor! Professor. Keep the mind on the chemistry. we're going to? I don't know. How would I know? Because I already know an awful lot of people, and until one of them dies, I couldn't possibly meet anyone else. Well, if anyone goes on the critical list, let me know. Mm. As you can see, she was in serious trouble. But she still found time to enjoy herself. Mrs. Lampert, any morning now, you could wake up dead. Of course, she never had as much fun as her husband. Now, he knew how to relax. You see, it all began when he got off the train. Now there's a relaxed husband. Police probably think I killed him. Instant divorce, you mean? From then on, her life was one round of enjoyment. <laughs> Entertainment. <laughs> Enchantment? <laughs> what are you doing in here? I'm having a nervous breakdown. But her life wasn't always that gay. There were times when she was in dire jeopardy. Hasn't it occurred to you that I'm having a tough time keeping my hands off you? Oh, you should see your face. What's the matter with it? It's lovely. When we played our charade Charles Voss's wife. Now that he's dead, you're their only lead. Mr. Bartholomew, if you're trying to frighten me, 
You're doing a first-rate job. is brave, of course, but he's never been as brave as this before. Jack Lemmon, funny, naturally, but never so fantastically funny as this. Men chasing Natalie Wood, not surprising, but never so frantically before. has ever been as great as they are in the world's greatest comedy, The Great Race. It's the greatest. It's the gayest. It's the wildest. It's the funniest. And how could it help but be with Jack Lemon as Professor Fate, the meanest villain that ever twirled a mustache? Tony Curtis as the great Leslie, gallant lover and heroic daredevil. Natalie Wood as Maggie Dubois, loveliest of lovely damsels in distress. Peter Falk, Keenan Wynn, Larry Storch, Dorothy Provine. It's the fabulous around-the-world race from New York to Paris. A rambunctious, rib-busting riot of a race. Its high points only outrun by the hilarity of what happens in between heats. You are an emancipated woman, Mr. Bois. And I am an emancipated man. They'll lead you a merry chase on land. Under the sea and in the air. You'll never stop laughing once you've started the great race. This is your man in Moscow, Carlton Kaduli. This year, an estimated 23,000 Americans will visit the Soviet Union as tourists. We're interested in finding how many Russians are planning to visit our shores. May we speak with you, sir? You, if you're so able to, you can do it. Uh, what is your name, if may I ask? Yuri Rozanov. Yuri Rozanov. Yes. May I call you Yuri? You could call me by my uh, nickname. What's that? You. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, you. Are you planning in the near future to visit our great country? Indubitably not. You don't plan to visit? Not then your tin type. Are you interested in seeing America? Not for a minute. Then we'll explain it to you. I have been there. You have visited yes. our fine country. When, sir? I was there a uh, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday a week. You mean a week ago Sunday a you were in America? Sunday I was there. Well, tell me, sir, how did you get there? I got there, you guess. Well, you were in a tour, an excursion? No, I wasn't. By plane? No. By boat? Submarine. That's and hard to believe, sir. That's hard to believe. It's an amazing story to behold, but we could demonstrate it to you. Could you? Well, how could you demonstrate this? We have photographs. You have moving, moving photographs. Moving pictures. Where will we see these? You right here. You took these pictures? Indeed, I did. In color and Panavision? Naturally, we invented it. Uh... 
You see, that is how we got to America. The Russians have landed. This whole dang island's under attack by Russians. Big boats. Yes. Well, motor power boats. All different kinds of boats, yes. Yes, sir, they're Russians. Uh-huh. A nice little boat there, sir. The Russians have captured the airport. Yeah. Listen, you guys, we've just got to get organized. For God's sake, we've got to get organized. Just don't panic. We've got to have ourselves a leader. It's all over. It's, it's all over. We haven't got a chance. Not a chance. As you can imagine, we were not expected. Don't fire until you see the light! Get out of the way! It's Agnes Grill! Those crazy Americans, all we wanted was both to pull our submarine off the reef and go home. There's the Reverend Hawthorne, and I'm still at my night thing. You help us get boat quickly, otherwise there is World War III, and everybody is blaming you! The Americans were not friendly, I take it. <laughs> I would say, uh, uh, not friendly. I don't want you going outside at all. I don't want you near the windows. Do you understand? Better yet, all of you stay in the cellar. Do you understand? Don't, don't fall over! Don't, don't fall over! <laughs> you kiss at me. You big, incompetent flatfoot! That's it! That's it! Right. Right. For God's sake, why is it we can't learn to live together? You're right, Norman. <laughs> Sir, those were just beautiful. I am, I am fascinated. I would like to see the whole movie. Well, by all means. Where can we see the rest of them? At my apartment. Or at this theater under the title, The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming. Or at my apartment. Or at his apartment. One of the best in a long time, says Life magazine. The funniest American comedy to come along, says the Saturday Review. Four stars. You will almost die laughing, but you will live to tell others to see this wild and wonderful comedy. Excruciatingly funny. New York Daily News. A hilarious troupe telling a hilarious tale in a hilarious way. Go. Enjoy. New York Times. Alan Arkin deserves an Oscar, says Time Magazine. Wildly shaken by laughter, we feel it our bounden duty to warn our readers that they may never be quite the same again, says an editorial in the Washington Daily News.
really want it that much. More. Only Audrey Hepburn could make him do it. <laughs> Only Peter O'Toole could do it. <laughs> Only three-time Academy Award director William Wyler could show Hepburn and O'Toole, the screen's greatest new romantic team, how to do it. entirely in Paris, and Paris and the entire world are watching, waiting, following every suspenseful move of the world's most delightful crime network. We mean the black lace network that glorifies the gorgeous legs of adorable, audacious Audrey Hepburn, as she hooks up with the world's smoothest stealer of hearts, Peter O'Toole. You interested in a big time caper? A what? A heist. A heist? Oh, you mean a burglary? What's the score, baby? The Cellini Venus. Are you really serious? It's worth a million dollars. You've seen the way your statue's protected, the electric eye, the guard. A million dollar statue, inescapable electric eyes. A famous Parisian museum with priceless works of art. 24 hour guard. A miraculous key, incredible maneuvers. Lavish, eye-filling production. And a fantastic band of co-conspirators. That fabulous rascal, Hugh Griffin, who forged more masterpieces than there are in the Louvre. I keep telling you, when you sell a fake masterpiece, that is a crime. But I don't sell them to poor people, I only sell them to millionaires. Eli Wallach as the mad millionaire, and Charles Boyer as the artful art dealer. I'm still vitally interested in the Cellini Venus, hot or cold. You know what I mean by that? Leland, do you know what you're saying? You're compounding a felony, offering to become a receiver of stolen goods. And wild, wild, wild Audrey. In a magnificent Givenchy wardrobe, with lovers on her trail. Laughter in her heart. And larceny on her mind. Right, there's the bathroom. Take off your clothes. Are we planning the same sort of crime? It's the big time robbery that boomerangs with the most suspenseful twists that ever had the Paris police running around in search. <laughs> century, practically, and we did it. Uh, can I? Can I be someone who women, women yearn after and crave for and lust after? I can just see you, Stanley, standing there in your skin-tight pants, the music pounding, the women screaming, Margaret loving the drums, throbbing out with her incessant let me have it! Ladies and gentlemen, we regret to announce that Mr. Stanley Donnan, producer director of such esteemed motion pictures as Charade, Arabesque, and Two for the Road, has sold his soul to these two talented uh, men to make what one critic calls the funniest picture I've seen in ages. <laughs> Sex is a terribly thorny subject, isn't it? I, I think we should get down to basic elements. We like feeling things. Do you like it in bed? Uh, uh, yes. Good. So do I. This is Stanley Moon. He's selling me his soul. If you were Stanley Moon, would you sell your soul for Margaret Spencer? One cheeseburger, one shanty, one portion of French fries. To the devil you would. I'm the haunted one. The devil. Let me give you my card. And what a dirty, rotten, low-down, double-crossing devil he is. 
Ian, yeah, that's terrible. You're a complete failure. Oh. Bedazzled is sinful. Your wife has a very beautiful body. Bedazzled is funny. <laughs> Bedazzled may never be shown on television. Although CBS calls it the best comedy around. And NBC thinks it's the thinking man's comedy of the year. here and I just want to read you some of the wonderful things about Ben. Hey, there's the award-winning scholar. We're all very proud of you, Ben. How are you, track star? What are you going to do now? I was going to go upstairs for a minute. Oh, I meant with your future. Your life. Well, that's a little hard to say. Because a vision softly creeping Left its seeds while I was sleeping Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> Aren't you? Have you gotten us a room yet? I haven't, no. Do you want to? I'll get undressed now. Is that all right? Sure. Shall I? I mean, shall I just stand here? I mean, I don't know what you want me to do. Why don't you watch? Oh, sure. Thank you. Mrs. Robinson, do you think we could say a few words to each other first this time? I don't think we have much to say to each other. Benjamin, are you having an affair with someone? I do think you should know the consequences of what you've done. I, I do think you should know that my wife and I are getting a divorce soon. What happened between Mrs. Robinson and me was nothing. It didn't mean anything. Well, that's not saying much for my wife. Point is, I don't love your wife. I love your daughter, sir. Are you going to Scarborough? ask you a question and then I'm going. From you? No. I want to know why you're here in Berkeley. Is it because I'm here? Well, look, I love you. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Will you marry me? Are we getting married tomorrow? Why don't you just drag me off if you want to marry me so much? You can't stop me from seeing her, Mrs. Robinson. I'll find her. Sorry we won't be able to invite you to the wedding, Benjamin, but the arrangements have been so rushed. Oh, Jesus, God. No.
find the worst plane in the world. A sure fire flop. Spring time for Hitler. Step two. I raise a million bucks. A lot of little old ladies in the world. I love you. What? I love you. What? I love you! Step three. You go back to work on the books. Only lists of backers, one for the government, one for us. Hey, I don't know, so We open on Broadway. Step five, we close on Broadway. Step six, we take our million bucks and we fly to Rio de Janeiro. Does their scheme work? Does this girl know? Do these boys care? Who is he? Is she a Swedish toy, hmm? or just another pretty body? <laughs> and what's their story? See the producers, and maybe you'll find out what it's all about. Starring Zero Mostel. Oh! I want that money! Co-starring Gene Wilder. Give me my blanket! Give me my blue blanket! Give me back my blue blanket! And Dick Sean as LSD. And I give to the big fat cop. He takes his glove and he beats me up. Go, the alley, baby! Go! What's wrong, Oscar? Something wrong with this system, that's what's wrong. I don't think that two single men living alone in a big eight-room apartment should have a cleaner house than my mother. Starring Jack Lemmon. A hypochondriac. A fuss budget. Neater than neat. Cleaner than clean. No wonder his wife kicked him out. <laughs> Stop that, will you? What are you doing? I'm trying to clear up my ears. Did it open up? Uh -huh. I think I strained my throat. Walter Matthau. Another guy whose wife left him. And his pad looks like she left it a long time ago. Who wants food? What do you got? I got uh, brown sandwiches and uh, green sandwiches. Which one do you want? What's the green? See, the very new cheese or very old meat. I'll take the brown. Jack Lemon and Walter Matthau, who try to enjoy all possible delights of a shared bachelor apartment. Yeah, oh, yes. Uh, bowling. Bowling is a wonderful exercise, Felix, but uh, that's, uh, that's not the kind of relaxation I had in mind. I mean, the night was made for other things. Like what? Like, unless I get to touch something soft, in the next two weeks, I'm in big trouble. They're together, bringing to all America the laughter of Neil Simon's Broadway smash hit. <laughs> oh, this is really nice. Yeah. <laughs> and ever so much cooler than our place. Oh, cooler. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's like equatorial Africa on our side of the building. Well, last night it was so bad, Gwen and I sat there in nature's own, cooling ourselves in front of the open fridge. Can you imagine such a thing? Well, I'm working at it. <laughs> <laughs> you had your chance to talk last night. I beg you to come upstairs with me. If you want to live here, I don't want to see you, I don't want to hear you, I don't want to smell your cooking. Now, kindly remove that spaghetti from my poker tape. It's not spaghetti. It's linguine. <laughs> now it's garbage. Come on! Take that out! I'm idiot! Hey, Oscar! What do I make for dinner? Just take a tranquilizer. Go to your room. Peter Sellers is Harundi V. Bakshi. Why would anyone invite him to the party? The 
party where everyone comes and anything goes. You're my sugar. I'm not your sugar. about those Hollywood parties. Now, Peter Sellers invites you to the party. If you've ever been to a wilder party, you're under arrest.